Like, sorry, I'm not gonna spend $650 for a Gucci coffee pot. And by the way, I didn't make that up. That is a real thing. So to see these people with privileged jobs spending $5,000 on a sweater just to burn it, I don't feel bad for them. You guys were dumb enough to buy a $5,000 sweater in the first place which I feel like any normal human being with any touch of reality wouldn't do. But that's just my opinion. I don't care. Y'all can call me Mr. Krabs for wanting to save my coin. But at least at the end of the day, I'm not acting surprised that the $2,000 sweater that I bought from a morally corrupt brand who is part of an industry that has always been morally corrupt from the beginning ended up being controversial and now I wasted all of my money. Um, couldn't be me. Y'all stay safe though. Hello everybody, it is me Salem and welcome back to my Chanel. How are you guys doing? I have a lot to talk about in this video, but first the most important thing is my dog. I have Roxy with me today. I'm gonna put her down in a bit because she looks super sleepy, but look how much bigger she's already gotten. That is so insane. They really do grow up fast. Girl, she's falling asleep, hold on. Today I'm in my pajamas because I had absolutely no desire to dress up. I even have my ranch Doritos on the side. Y'all want some ASMR? This is a spicy ranch Dorito. <coughs> I'm never doing ASMR again. This video is going to be super long and i know i say that a lot but no this video actually is gonna be super long because i'm gonna be talking about two things today one not so great and the other also not so great so we'll see how that goes we are going to talk about the controversy surrounding that, the elitism that comes with high fashion brands, and how this is nothing new when it comes to controversial ads in the fashion industry. Also, somehow we're gonna talk about Kim Kardashian too, so this is gonna be a whole thing. Everything somehow ties into each other, so let's get into it. But before we deep dive into the controversial world of high fashion, I really need to talk to you guys about something important that happened to me recently. I have not been doing very good. Which is a shame because my last video, I was like, I'm so happy, I'm honestly thriving. But also, as I said in that video, whenever I'm happy, something goes wrong. And I was right, because something did go wrong. Because in my last video about me talking about the stay-at-home girlfriend trend, it was half video essay, half opinion based. Got age restricted out of nowhere. Because apparently I violated one of the guidelines. For those of you who don't know the guidelines, the main things that can get a video of yours restricted is putting putting a child in a dangerous situation. Second is harmful or dangerous activities. Um, sexual um, nature type content, violent or graphic content, or vulgar language. And if you guys, you know, watched my video, you would see that I didn't invite light any of those things and let's be honest there is so many other creators on this platform who have done far worse are incredibly more vulgar than i will ever be in my life and do not get age restricted or demonetized this is a problem that a lot of youtubers are facing right now that this often happens to creators of color jacksepticeye has talked about it corey kenshin has talked about it this was a big deal not too long ago and it's still happening i of course try to appeal the age restriction but and literally five minutes later it was still denied and in that email of it being denied stated that a human had reviewed it within five minutes girl yeah doesn't make sense to me it literally told me that they're not allowed to tell me which guideline i violated out of fear of me committing it again which is an insane insult to my integrity as a content creator who's been on here for almost two years and has never gotten an age restricted video or has gone demonetized i'm very much very well aware of the guidelines and how i did not violate them and to be treated like i am a child who is incapable of understanding the guidelines and also being reduced to being considered lower 
than content creators who actually create harmful content is incredibly demeaning. It's also incredibly unfair treatment because many creators have done the same exact video that I did on the same exact content but did not get age restricted, which shows that I was directly targeted. I was going to make this, the whole age restricted thing, its own separate video. However, I fear that me speaking out on this even further will make my channel even more of a target to become age restricted and silenced. And that's just not the vibe for me right now. And as always, if you don't agree with my content or think that I'm abrasive, you're always welcome to just click out of the video. And that's honestly all I have to say. But of course, thank you so much for everyone who has kept me in your best wishes, who have reached out to the YouTube team on my behalf, has sent me positive vibes and positive DMs. That helps me be stronger and not back down so I can keep making content for you guys. So thank you. So during me editing this video because I filmed this a couple days ago, I actually woke up to an amazing email stating that the age restriction was actually appealed finally which i'm so happy for thank you to all of you who believed in me and believed in my content and platform i truly did not violate any of the guidelines and it's been confirmed that i never did but having to deal with this for the last week and a half has been completely draining to go through y'all have no idea what i had to go through to get that video back into the algorithm i literally had to pull a Karen, which I'm not proud of, but I would do anything for my platform and I would do anything for you guys. And you know, although I was talking about how I felt during the whole process and it's been appealed, I don't really take back anything I stated previously. It was a huge pain in the arse, but all is well, all is over, and I'm super happy that I can get back to just making regular content. You know, I wish that I could be a boring influencer and just do my makeup and talk about really boring crap or do nothing in front of a camera but unfortunately you know i love talking and no one can take that away from me so so i thought that we would just talk about a fun fresh not age restrictable topic um anyways let's talk about balenciaga <laughs> because there is a lot that i have to say as always so get some tea get your favorite snack get all snuggled up and let's talk about the world of high fashion but first y'all know the drill i gotta pay my bills so here's today's video sponsor lomi is a countertop electric composter that turns scraps to dirt in under four hours there's no smell when it runs and it's really quiet you know recently i had a dungeons and dragons night at my place and i had to make this big meal but i kind of overestimated how much i needed to cook so i was left with a lot of food and I didn't want to waste it so I ended up using my Lomi and honestly it's helped me reduce the amount of garbage I make per week which means it's not going to landfills and producing methane instead I get to turn my food waste into nutrient rich dirt that I can feed to my plant babies so now my Dungeons and Dragon nights are a lot easier to clean up if you want to start making a positive environmental impact as well head to Lomi.com slash Salem Tovar and use promo code Salem Tovar to get $50 off your Lomi. That's $50 off when you head to Lomi, L-O-M-I dot slash Salem Tovar and use promo code Salem Tovar at checkout. And with the holidays just around the corner, Lomi will make the perfect gift for someone on your shopping list. Literally, someone should hire me for voice acting. Like, I'm literally gonna be the next Siri. Anyways, let's finally get into the video. Part one, the Balenciaga scandal why everybody is rightfully pissed and the conversation around it. So just last month, Balenciaga got into pretty hot water by doing something really stupid. I'm not gonna go in depth as to what the Balenciaga situation was because first of all, if you don't know what happened then you must live under a rock because it was massive it was trending on twitter right so i highly recommend watching this video for context but i will try to summarize it for those of you who don't know what happened balenciaga dropped its holiday ad campaign featuring just really inappropriate photos that were not so child friendly and please do not search up these photos the reason why i'm censoring myself heavily is i'm trying to get age restricted again but also because i refuse to describe what the photos 
photos were. Just know that they were highly inappropriate and really stupid. And there is a very rightful and valid reason why a lot of people are upset right now, including me. This was during Paris's fashion week where these accessories were also on the runway at the Balenciaga show. And almost immediately the backlash against the images was trending with the hashtag cancel Balenciaga, trending across Twitter and TikTok and many accusing the brand and its creative director, Demna, of being creeps. On November 21st, Balenciaga also dropped another photograph that was in even more poor taste, directly correlating with court cases of exploitative nature. Balenciaga first responded to all of this controversy by basically deleting everything off their Instagram, doing damage control. On November 22nd, Balenciaga issued an apology as well as the photographers. Now this is when Kim Kardashian gets roped into all of this. For those of you who don't know, Kim Kardashian has a very, very close relationship with the brand Balenciaga. On November 27th, Kim Kardashian, a vocal supporter of the brand who previously started her own campaign for it and recently included a cameo from Balenciaga's director Demna, the fool who started all this crap, took to Instagram and Twitter saying, I have been quiet for the past few days, not because I haven't been disgusted and outraged by the recent Balenciaga campaigns. Her statement went on to say that she's currently reevaluating her future relationship with the brand, but she said that she was basing it off of their willingness to accept accountability for something that should have never happened to begin with, which is incredibly morally questionable, I feel. I know Julia Fox also came under fire for working with them. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of comments and tags and everything. So first things first, I'm not their spokesperson. I have zero relationship with the brand. I've never even been to one of their shows. They haven't invited me. Regardless, um, I think it's horrific. And when I was reading and watching all the videos, I literally felt sick to my stomach. But I couldn't help but think like, damn, the women who are associated to the brand professionally are getting so much pushback. And it's like almost as if they're the And then another thought popped into my head. Um, no child was actually harmed in that shoot. Um, but millions of children are harmed in the church every day. And um, I don't see hashtag cancel the church anywhere. Um, anyway... Those are my thoughts. First of all, she has a point that it seems that a lot of the women associated with the brand are getting dragged. However, if you're associated with a brand that's doing bad and you represent them, such as Kim Kardashian, you do kind of have fault to an extent as a representative, which I'll talk about later on in the video. Obviously, the main perpetrators that are to blame is the brand and the people involved in the project itself. But when you literally wear their clothes and constantly support them, it can be seen as as, well, not that it can be seen as, it literally is just a continuous supporting of them and their actions. But I also understand that there is biases with the women because there is also, you know, a lot of celebrity men who represent Balenciaga as well. Obviously, when I talk about this stuff, it doesn't pertain to Julia because she says that she's not in any way associated with the brand, which is true to an extent. So I'm mostly talking about accountability in celebrities who do represent them, such as Kim Kardashian. However, I will say a lot of Julia's points in this video were not it. And I'm actually insanely flabbergasted and gobbledygooped that I got a million likes because yes, children actually were harmed in the making of these ads. And I'm tired of people acting as if the only type of harm that's valid is physical when you know a word can take on many different forms not just physical. I think it's a million percent valid to mention the other children being harmed every day in the church because yes, that is true. However, let's not use people's trauma to deflect from situations that are also harming people just to minimize accountability on your end. Every topic tied to a word should be discussed properly and not used as a scapegoat. Love Julia Fox, but this was a very poor take. But speaking of celebrities and their relationships to luxury brands, Yay, you made it to part two. This is the part where we talk about how like these brands benefit still from your anger and that kind of sucks. Many, many celebrities um, have worked with Balenciaga, especially when it comes to ad campaigns, which Balenciaga is known for having pretty unconventional ad campaigns. I mean, there was also the show that was like in the middle of like a 
storm with like mud and rain and stuff. There was also the latest one, which was a submersive neon colored social media commentary where there was one model who literally looked like a Dementor from Harry Potter. Obviously these ad campaigns are made to make people talk about it. Balenciaga isn't the only brand that has done pretty controversial ads. Tom Ford has had a crap load of controversial photo shoots with their campaigns. The majority of these luxury and high fashion brands make their name through outrage culture and getting people to talk about their ad campaigns and crazy runways. But the part that I'm wanting to have a conversation around, when does it become not worth it when you're trading in morality for consumerism? What happened with the whole Balenciaga thing makes me sick to my stomach. This finally brings attention to the fact that this happens a lot, even when people aren't being photographed. People are being taken advantage of. There's a lot of exploitation going on in the fashion industry. There is just a lot of moral ambiguity going on when it comes to high luxury brands. I'm not surprised that any of this happened. I'm not surprised that Balenciaga did this. And I'm actually very taken back by so many people being surprised that a multi-million dollar company is morally corrupt and in order to make some sort of profit in a capitalist society there has to be someone along the lines who are being exploited and when it comes to multi-millionaire fashion companies so many people are being exploited the workers the models the people who make the clothing the people who make the accessories so me seeing all these big influencers burning their balenciaga sweaters or burning stuff that they bought from them i'm like but why did you buy from them in the first place first of all i would never buy anything from them i ain't paying two thousand dollars for a freaking sweater that i can get at goodwill for like 12 bucks like are you kidding me like sorry i'm not gonna spend 650 dollars for a gucci coffee pot and by the way i didn't make that up that is a real thing so to see these people with privileged jobs spending five thousand dollars on a sweater just to burn it i don't feel bad for them you guys were dumb enough to buy a five thousand dollar sweater in the first place which I feel like any normal human being with any touch of reality wouldn't do. But that's just my opinion. I don't care. Y'all can call me Mr. Krabs for wanting to save my coin. But at least at the end of the day, I'm not acting surprised that the $2,000 sweater that I bought from a morally corrupt brand who is part of an industry that has always been morally corrupt from the beginning ended up being controversial and now I wasted all of my money. Um, couldn't be me. Y'all stay safe though. I think it's cool if you're into, you know, clothing and spending a lot of money on your clothing you know if you're a sneaker head if you're someone who likes nice cars that's cool hey i'm not judging all i'm saying is why buy shoes for a thousand dollars at a luxury brand that uses the same materials to make said shoes you know there when you can just roxy woke up from her nap when you know pay less for like fifteen dollars you can get the same shoes made from the same material the only thing that differentiates these normal shoes made from the same material is honestly just the brand that they slap on it you see these these are clip-on earrings i got these for like five dollars at claire's what's the difference between these hoops versus clip-on earrings from like a high fashion brand a lot of these high fashion brands claim to have better materials and sometimes yes it's the case but many many times it's not and it's been proven time and time again that these high fashion brands actually actually don't have good quality clothing or good long lasting durable fabrics to their clothing or accessories that people think this also happens with makeup brands you know a perfect example is kylie cosmetics and ColourPop. you know kylie cosmetics her lip kit is literally 32 dollars right however something that a lot of people don't know is that kylie jenner uses the same exact warehouse that ColourPop cosmetics makes their makeup in and guess how much their lipsticks cost like nine to fifteen dollars ten dollars for a sailor moon ColourPop collab which i don't know about you guys but i would rather much give my money to queen usagi than one of the jenners or kardashians and this relates to what i was talking earlier which is it's 
not necessarily that the brand creates good quality things. It's literally just the name that makes the prices go all the way up, which is insane to me. So when you buy things from high fashion brands, you're not buying the product. You're not buying the fabric. You are buying the name. You are buying essentially a power and you are buying your way into being considered other or even financially better or at least the illusion that you're financially well off high fashion and luxury brands it's separating you from the ugly poor people to the people who can actually afford the nice rich people stuff of course i'm just being satirical but this is how a lot of people i feel like um subconsciously think the narrative that is roped into a lot of luxury brands and a lot of high fashion brands is that you are paying for these privileges right the privilege to wear what they're selling you right and the privilege to say that you are associated with them you are buying the privilege to say that you're part of like the inner circle you know fashion and luxury brands it doesn't come down to the clothes themselves and what they represent but it has absolutely everything to do with the names associated with the brands all right we're on part three this is the part where we talk about celebrities are sponsored many times by these fashion brands and stuff they have a close relationship this is why you know a lot of fashion brands have their it celebrity right you know tommy hilfiger has zendaya as their brand ambassador timothy charlemagne is an ambassador for cartier cartier carter i don't know how to pronounce it guys i ain't timothy charlemagne that was my impersonation of Timothy. You know, there's Whitney Peak for Chanel. Not too long ago, Haley and Justin Bieber were repping Calvin Klein's. And of course, Kim Kardashian for Balenciaga. So a lot of these fashion brands, what they do is they essentially hire really famous people to rep that brand, which, you know, directly gives them even more fame and income because the names that are associated with the brands help really put their name out there and help dress the celebrity and their brand so that their fans can also buy the clothing and accessories from that brand. It's one big marketing, you know, gimmick and it's one that really does work. And it's not only fashion brands, you know, there's also, you know, there was Charlie D'Amelio with uh, Dunkin' Donuts and also Amy Schumer with Tampax. When it comes to products that are harmless, like a freaking donut and coffee and like, you know, Tampax, that's cool. I'm fine with that. However, luxury and high fashion brands mixing celebrity names has always come off very strange to me. It makes sense, obviously, right? To have a celebrity just wear your clothing because the reason why a lot of these brands hire these very specific celebrities keep in mind they tend to hire people who are charismatic or iconic so that their brand is looked upon favorably because a lot of these brands have a long history of just problematic things you know earlier i mentioned gucci and their very weirdly racist clothing designs you know burberry had a very incredibly controversial hoodie in 2019 that mocked you know offing oneself tommy hilfiger had a couple of accusations of him stating that his fashion brand was not meant for minorities tom ford had extremely extremely sexist ads you know cartier or cartier whatever was criticized for letting emma chamberlain wear the diamond necklace that was a part of India's stolen history. A lot of these brands have dirt to them but they cover it up with these big celebrities so that you can forget all this stuff. And Balenciaga is no exception. And I do think that to a certain extent, a lot of these celebrities who are closely tied into these brands should bear some responsibility when these brands mess up because they work as representatives of this brand, of these brands. So to see how Kim Kardashian handled the entire thing was really really you know i can't even say disappointing because it's like are we surprised 
you know, again, I'm not surprised that she handled it the way that she handled it. However, it is very incredibly disappointing to see how she handled it. And going back to what I said even earlier in this video, I think Kim does bear a little bit of responsibility for what Balenciaga, not for what Balenciaga did, but for announcing that she is considering continuing to work with them, which is a statement that what the brand did to her wasn't considered that bad enough for her to completely cut ties with them and it indirectly shows support and by continuing to work with them it doesn't hinder these situations from repeating in my personal opinion i feel like if anything it adds more fuel to the fire for these situations to happen again knowing that these big celebrities will always be their safety net no matter how bad they mess up and that just really sucks and again this is not me saying it's all kim kardashian's fault obviously it's not it is on the brand of the photographer and the people involved in the project point that i'm making is a lot of these brands although they might fake apologize or whatever the more that these celebrities who have power to their name are associated with them in a way gives them permission to just keep existing as a brand and obviously the only way that cancel culture actually works is when someone is fired or deplatformed and that's just not going to happen when it comes to really powerful multi-millionaire brands and celebrities unfortunately when you live in a capitalistic society money truly does over trump justice many many times and with the whole balenciaga thing i definitely see that happening as a representative to a brand when they do something wrong it is a statement to leave that brand but there's a lot of money in it there's a lot of money in the name of the celebrity and then there's a lot of money with the luxury brands that the celebrity is tied into and vice versa and unfortunately no matter how controversial the ads are and also unfortunately no matter how dark the history of the fashion or luxury brand is a lot of people in both industries would rather choose money over morality because there is no benefit in choosing morality especially when millions of dollars are at stake when working together with a celebrity representative and a luxury brand it is a lose lose situation to both parties if they choose morality when it comes to the balenciaga ad and controversies surrounding these luxury brands a lot of it has to do again i mentioned earlier in the video with exploitation of workers models and unfortunately children and although there is a lot of blame on the celebrities that represent these brands you know them directly supporting you know these actions by continuing to work with them knowing damn well what they've done right and then these brands choosing to profit off of outrage culture and trading in their integrity for people to talk more about them. Um, I strongly believe that there is one point that not a lot of people have been talking about and that is um, the parents. No one's talking about the parents and I am a person that strongly believes parents are supposed to be there to guide them in the right direction to achieve those goals and to choose things that are good for them and that won't put them in harm's way. And it's absolutely ridiculous to me that no one's talking about the ignorance and the that these parents portrayed by voluntarily allowing their child to be a part of these ad campaigns. Part 4. There are many people that we need to hold accountable and parents are one of them. And before you guys try to defend them, which is crazy by the way, I can't, I can't believe people will try to defend the parents. Um, so the parents actually came out and said that they support Balenciaga for the ads. They were 100% aware of what was going on and the father who opted to put their child in that ad literally said that it was an enjoyable experience and was there the entire photo shoot. And you're telling me not even once you thought that this ad campaign doesn't really fit children but should fit people of age? That is absolutely insane to me and this is so common because a lot of these controversial ads and the exploitation of young people in these luxury brand and high fashion brand industries wouldn't be happening if these parents were smart enough and cared enough about these children about their children's future you know i think of in 1980 calvin klein made a very inappropriate ad with brooke shields when she was 15 again parents never stepped in you know in 2012 mark jacobs came under fire for using underage models in his shows. There is also, I mean, a huge uh, topic that's controversial that I can make a video all on its own, but I don't think I ever will, um, about should, you know, children be fashion models? Should that be a thing? I won't give my opinion on it. 
All I know is that a lot of these controversial ads wouldn't be a thing if parents weren't so fame hungry and money hungry. You know, they wouldn't exist if there were parents who actually cared about their children. I want people to think of this. If every parent in that situation pulled out their kid, the ad would have never been created. And again, this isn't a situation where well, the parents are being manipulated and also exploited. No, again, using the example of the Balenciaga father, he was he's very much aware of what's going on. And actually, a lot of parents are very much well aware when putting your child in positions of, you know, TV shows, of fame, singing. We've seen it time and time again. They grow into adults who deal with pretty heavy stuff. And if you want to make the argument that some people voluntarily put their children in acting or voluntarily voluntarily put their children in singing or whatever to make money because there is no other option. I understand that. However, there has been a bunch of actors and singers and famous people who were famous as children who have now come out writing books, who have now made podcasts talking about how they literally hated being a child actor. They hated about being a child model. They hated being a child, you know, singer or whatever. And before y'all come for me in the comments, as always, Obviously, yes, you can be a parent who loves their child and has their best interest and safety in mind and still be a part of these industries. Do they exist? Yes. Is it the majority? Absolutely not. And we see it time and time again. Obviously, there is a healthy way to go about it, making sure the child is in therapy, that you're in contact with the child 24 seven, making sure they're not doing things that they feel pressured into doing, making sure that they feel safe filming a scene or wearing certain clothing. But the truth is the majority of parents who are in these industries with their children don't don't keep track of these things and that's why they grow into very troubled adults and again y'all can argue with me all you want of not every parent obviously duh and there's also a lot of child actors and models and singers who grew into perfectly capable adults who loved their journey to stardom but again we're speaking about the majority and the majority is that they grow to be people who need to have therapy later on in life which is nothing bad however if that can be avoided by properly navigating the moral ambiguity that these industries hold, you know, then try to avoid it by taking the proper steps to making sure your child is safe. But to see these Balenciaga parents kind of dismiss all of that, you never know what the child is going to grow up thinking. And you know, that's how resentment gets built within families. And I'm not even going to go that deep. All I know is that when talking about parenting, people get really annoying about it. It's also really annoying and gross. People who are continuously defending this ad, especially the own parents of the child, of the children who are put into these ads. That is insane to me. And this is the direction our society is going in. Just everyone wants to be famous, everyone wants to be an influencer, everyone wants to be a TikToker, and children are being exploited more than ever. It's actually kind of crazy. We see more child influencers more than ever. People using their children for clout on TikTok. Like, girl, I don't want to be on this earth anymore. Someone take me to Mars already. Can I just live like on my own planet? And the only role that I'll have on my planet is that I require daily naps and that's it. But don't even get me started on just this new generation of, you know, alpha children who are constantly having a camera shoved in their face and then being reposted on the internet. I genuinely believe that their mental health is going to be so awful when they grow up and it's so sad to say, but I do believe there's also going to be court cases later on in the future featuring these children who did not consent to having their first moments of life filmed and put onto YouTube. And it already is happening but I digress. It just always sucks to see when people choose money over safety and morality. And yet we continuously see parents repeating history over and over and over again. And it's such a shame to see the whole Balenciaga thing blow up in Balenciaga's face yet still receive support from the parents, the celebrity representing the brand, and people who are still buying their stuff. I'm a massive believer in the concept of making a strategic move and how you spend your money and how you and where you put your energy towards to really make a difference. I don't think burning your Balenciaga sweater is gonna do anything, especially because you already gave them the money in the first place. So really it's just at a loss for you. I don't think people only blaming Kim Kardashian is the solution either. The truth is that we need to focus on the fact that brands continuously feel safe enough in our society 
to make profit off of our anger. This is the finale and this is part five. This is the finale and this is part five. Ow, ow, kitty cat, ow, 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 kitty cat, ow. And these brands and people that y'all try to cancel, they know this. They know the formula. They know that they will always have some sort of safety net, whether it's socially with the people that they're connected to who have more power than them, whether it's their loyal fan base. It's really hard to have accountability actually be a thing nowadays, especially when it comes to, again, like brands and people who are associated with just power in general. Every single influencer that you hate, every brand that you hate knows that your hate and you interacting with them sending them tweets it's still interaction you know what i mean it's still a tweet it's still you talking about them it's still you mentioning them and they view it as a good thing because you're giving them free publicity and it's just really hard to navigate that because even though you're interacting with them for a bad thing it still benefits them indirectly and that's what happens when there is a greater emphasis on outrage marketing and money over being a genuinely good intentioned brand and in my opinion i I don't think there's such thing as a well-intentioned, a morally good brand. I just don't believe that you can mix business and morality together. That's just my opinion. But I will say because of the safety net of these companies, always being able to rely on, you know, fans and celebrities to give them money no matter what they do, I feel as though canceling them won't do much, especially because I, I really don't believe in cancel culture. I really do think that it's selective outrage. And when we approach these situations with a selective outrage lens, not much is going to be done. It makes for some people getting off scot-free while others being punished unfairly or others being punished to a certain extent that's too harsh or not harsh enough. It leaves a big space of moral ambiguity in a lot of certain situations where why is it okay that Tom Ford or you know Burberry or Gucci have done all these things but only Balenciaga is the one that gets to have consequences, you know what I mean? Obviously that's not me shifting blame. I actually strongly believe all of these brands should be held accountable and if that starts with balenciaga that's awesome i'm glad that it can open a conversation to talk about other high fashion brands that have also kind of swept a lot of things under the rug but like i said earlier i don't think canceling them will do much only because people who participate in cancel culture go about things incredibly emotionally and their first instincts were to be upset which is valid but then to burn all the stuff they bought from them from balenciaga like i said i don't think that really does much since you literally already since you literally already gave them your money and cancel culture does this a lot where it's filled with just unproductive emotion because the majority of these companies don't have feelings so they literally do not care how you feel about their brands they will issue a sale a soulless apology but you know this is why it's so important to think of things in a different perspective the fact that we have to get angry in order for any change to happen rather than just doing it right in the first place i uh, should be very telling about these brands that people were supporting before and then acted surprised that they ended up being morally corrupt which obviously i think it's okay to learn things along the way as you live life it's okay to make Make mistakes however this isn't a human that we're talking about this is a professional brand that has a bunch of people within one network this project had to have been passed down to person to person to person to get approved and somehow everyone was like yep this is fine and these brands know that anger is incredibly profitable especially nowadays where everyone's angry about absolutely everything all the time everyone wants to feel like they got their justice for every little injustice they can think of and you know something in this industry that i've heard time and time again is people will always find the next thing to be mad at and that's honestly scary that a lot of you know companies and influencers and and people in power have you know said i have literally been in rooms where that has been said to me or other people and it honestly it's crazy because it's true and that's why a lot of these people in power and companies and stuff they're like i let's just do damage control let's apologize and just keep existing it ain't gonna mess up our bank account you know what i mean and obviously this isn't me trying to instate fear into you you or try to instate more anger and more sense of injustice into you or feel like no matter what we do nothing can be done because that's not true things can definitely be done i just don't think burning a sweater that you already bought is gonna do much the angrier that you get the more to a benefit it is for them even if it sounds crazy and even if it seems like it's not true or that doesn't work 
Of course, there are some cases, again, in some cases, outreach culture is needed and sometimes it really does help. But in the majority of cases, girl, it's a hot mess. It's a hot mess and these brands know it. And that's why a lot of these companies continue on living because they know that we will find something else to be mad about and forget what they did. So then this brings up the question, what exactly is the solution? Obviously, I don't think canceling the entire industry itself would work either because I do believe that high fashion, luxury brands, you know, all these clothing and shoes and accessories, I do think it's a form of art and I don't know if it would be a good idea to ban art. And yes, that also means that the photographs and ad campaigns and all of this stuff is also a form of art too. But then that leads us into another layer of the fashion industry, which is when does art become distasteful? Which is incredibly subjective because I believe art is meant to disturb you, but to a certain extent. Although I don't agree that art should be free, I do agree that art should be accessible to everyone. When we're talking about art and these luxury high fashion brands, art in itself creates dialogue, it creates controversy, it breaks boundaries, it breaks rules. However, there is a fine line between art and artistic expression and, you know, the artistic urge to provoke, right? And then just straight up, and then just straight up purposely trying to feed into outrage culture. That's not art. There's nothing artistic about about exploiting people, especially if it's not even commentary on the exploitation of people, which many artists have made paintings and artwork and, you know, social, physical artwork in the name of getting a conversation started. However, in this situation, that is not the case and we all know it. So what can we do about situations like these? How do we stop having these situations reoccur? Like how does, how do we go about this? I think that we need to keep talking about stuff. We need to keep talking about this. We need to keep talking about the different aspects of art and luxury and high fashion. Parents have to be a lot more aware because that will bring awareness to people who possibly can get into dangerous situations because of just the power that these brands hold. It'll also bring awareness to photographers and people who make, you know, the dream work, right? Is that what they call it? More aware of the harm that can be done when art is done wrongly with malicious intent. I also think that people need to put their money where their mouth is. Stop buying from these luxury brands. Trust me, they don't care about you. Obviously you can do whatever the hell that you wanna do. Like I'm just a random person on the internet wearing my pajama robe, eating branch Doritos. However, I think every single one of us can benefit from being a little bit more aware in how we invest our money and how can indirectly or directly directly affect, you know, these big problems that we keep seeing being repeated. This is the note I will leave all of you with. Money fades, but dumb is forever. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and like and subscribe and comment down below what you think about this topic. I had lots of thoughts about this topic when it first came out, but I just wanted to wait a little bit longer because I like getting all the info before I make, you know, um, a video on on anything really y'all know the drill keep it cute keep it cordial in the comment section i don't want to see no bitter betties in my comment section create conversation amongst each other and real quick guys i just want to say something um about the religion video that's it's i it's been like three weeks now i promised you guys that i would start doing deep talk series in between these bi-weekly commentary videos and my first one was going to be on religion um you know, I put a pause on that and now I really don't know what I want to do at all because I'm really terrified that YouTube is going to age restrict me again or demonetize me. So I, I don't know what's going to happen guys. I really don't. And I'm so sorry. Like, I feel like whenever I say I'm going to like do something, it never ends up working out. And I just don't want that to be my thing. You know, like it will happen. I do want to upload more and I want to upload more, you know, personal videos rather than me talking about pop culture. You know, that my idea was to do makeup while talking about life topics rather than pop culture topics. And now I'm just like, I'm not so sure if that's going to work out because I'm just terrified that YouTube would take down my channel because unfortunately that wasn't something that was on my mind when i was filming my religion video but ever since i got age restricted it really changed my perspective on how i trust youtube and how i feel like i can't really post anything now but um i will keep you guys posted on what's gonna happen i know a lot of you guys said to do patreon i used to have a patreon it only lasted about like three months i ended up not using it a lot so i ended up telling people like hey make sure you get a refund like i'll 
you know, just cancel it and whatever, like I'm fine with it, get your money back, right? I wanted to post videos on Patreon. Apparently you need to charge a certain amount and you need like a certain following and stuff in order to do videos and it's just really stupid and just Patreon did not end up working for me at all. I want to find another platform where maybe I can do more serious, serious deep talk videos. I don't know. If you guys have any suggestions of like platforms that I can like start posting those type of videos on where I can still kind of make money on because um, I got bills to pay too. Um, and trust me, I won't. <laughs> buy a Balenciaga sweater with it and burn it. Anyways, so yeah, just keep me in your good graces and let's hope that this whole age restriction thing on my girlfriend video actually goes somewhere. I'll keep all of you guys updated on that situation because it has been taking a huge toll on my physical and mental health, unfortunately, because I'm just like, this is so unfair and I don't understand. <sighs> But I digress. Oh, but if I made Coco Melon videos, YouTube would eat that up. Even though the guy who made Coco Melon it like went to jail or something. But God forbid I have an opinion. Before I go, guys, I want to leave you guys with some homework. Make sure you do something that you love today. Go ahead and wear some warm PJs and drink some hot cocoa. Take a nap, drink water, but most importantly, make today count. And of course, when you get out there into the real world, care for one another, lift one another up, and help a friend out today. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. And I I will see you in the next video. Bye.